Altenburg in Saxony is the venue for round three of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. On what has been a drizzly, misty day so far, we have a fantastic race in store as we get into the second and deciding heat. Hello, everybody. I'm Martin Haven. And what a packed leaderboard we have got after a rainy first heat that threw the cat firmly among the pigeons. The Olympic champion, World Cup points leader, winner of the first race of the season, Mariami Amanka went off last in the field and aquaplaned, in her words, her way into a tie for second place, just four hundredths of a second off the leader. Well, so far, so normal, a German in the top three. Canada's Alicia Risley making her World Cup start with debutante break woman Bianca Ribi behind her, also strong in the first heat. She's tied for second place with Mariami Amanka on a track where she has raced just twice previously. But the big surprise in the first heat was Misha McNeil and Montel Douglas of Great Britain. McNeil, whose world almost fell apart in bobsleigh terms when funding was withdrawn at the beginning of last season, has found herself a great run down and into the lead to the delight of coach Lee Johnson. But look at this packed leaderboard. A tie for second, 400s back. A tie for fourth, a tenth back. 1500s back, Christine De Bruyne. Catty Bile, 2400s back. And 2600s back is Anne Christ uh, Stephanie Schneider and Anne Christen Strack of Germany. The top eight sleds covered effectively by a quarter of a second. From ninth on down, unlikely to get into the medals. But from eighth on up, we could have all sorts of fireworks. It was raining pretty consistently all the way through the first heat, and as a result, the track got wetter and wetter, possibly softer and slower, and certainly Mariami Amanka there was talking to Ron Ringuth down at the finish area afterwards on the public address, and she said it was just aquaplaning. Well, there is Misha McNeil, Olympic silver medalist in the Youth Olympic Games back in 2012. She's a junior world championship medalist as well. Can she take her first ever World Cup win here? Well, anything, I think, is possible in the second heat. There is Alana Myers-Taylor. She currently lies in the tie for what is fourth place. So we've got a pair of sleds in second, pair of sleds in fourth. There's the Swiss break woman, Nadia Pasternak, like everybody else, limbering up in the car park right behind the finish hut here. And there is a view of, on the left-hand side, the beginning of the Kreisel. 360 degree turn on this track. So the start order sees them go in reverse order. There are 13 sleds from eight nations, two previous winners already this year. Could we have a third different winner? The answer is yes, we could. Question is whom? Misha McNeil will go last of all, trying to defend the slenderest of leads against an Olympic champion who has had recent knowledge of this track and comes from Germany. Well, there we go. That's the setup. Let's get into the action. Lubov Czernik of Russia with Yulia Egoshenko behind her. Lubov Czernik, World Cup rookie this season. 23 year old with a 26 year old break woman. They're both making their third World Cup start of their careers. And again, Yulia Egoshenko leaps into the sled. 596 to get away, 594 in the first heat. Now, normally we talk about this being an ice canal. It was more like a water slide, a cold, icy water slide. But water was streaming down the track in the first heat. Refrigeration's been on hard to try and make sure the surface doesn't melt away. But that is going to mean in the humid conditions it will get frostier. Now, it's had a fresh spritz, a spray of ice, like running a Zamboni down the track to make it nice and sharp for the first few sleds. How long that remains before it gets frosty, we'll wait and see. Out of 11 and 12, nice run so far for Lubov Czernik. This young Russian only beginning her third season of sliding this year. She's got lots of potential. Across the line, let's take a look at the time. 59.35, now that's six tenths better than her first heat. And that's not just a one heat to two heat improvement. That looks to me as though the track is giving a lot more pace. Now, of course, without the water making the sled skid around, the nature of the ice will be very different. And so it's whoever adapts best to that who's going to get the neatest second heat. And both heats do count. You don't just get a head start 
all the time that you use to get down the track twice will be counted. Little skid there as she comes a fraction late off the Kreisel. Uh, off nine, rather, onto straight down to the Kreisel. But that was all good from Lubov Chernik. There she is with brave woman Yulia Egoshenko. Big smile there. She knows that was a much better run. Probably felt more like a bobsled track. Certainly wasn't this wet in training. It snowed, it didn't snow, but it didn't rain this hard. First laid out of the shed was Switzerland's Martina Fonteneva with Nadia Pasternak, her brake woman. 32-year-old driver, 22-year-old brake woman. Just one previous World Cup race here for Martina. She finished 19th last year in what was a packed pre-Olympic field. Next year, when we come here, it'll be for two weeks of the World Championship. So learning now is absolutely vital for all these athletes. Now, she was tied at the start with uh, uh, Lubov Czernik in the first heat, and she's just gone a little quicker, 600s quicker. So opening up her first heat advantage now to 1800s. Can she keep that alive? 1600s, the gap is coming down a fraction. Definitely think it was a better drive from Lubov Czernik than in her first heat, but there again, Fonteneva comes nicely onto the straight, into the Chrysler. One pressure, two pressures, three pressures, high on the exit, clatters the wall on the right-hand side. Little rocky through 11 and 12. Down through 13, big corner 14. Now you come quite steeply uphill over the outrun, which goes under the track there, and down into corner 15. 16, and she's still a quarter second up at the line, 59.25. So she's gone a tenth quicker on this run than the Russians. And she did a 59.83 in the first heat, so she's found getting on for six tenths of a second of an improvement. So into the lead, Martina Fontenev. Got a little hooked up getting into the sled. There's a tiny little plastic rest that basically the, the buttocks of the driver lean against. You brace yourself with your feet against foot pedals in there or foot plates in there so that you can use your hands not to brace yourself but to steer. Little late there coming out 14. So a skid uphill over the brow in the white jacket. Get Grimmer. Be thinking of him particularly next weekend when we go to Koenigsegg Bavaria. He bet his then driver that uh, if he won a World Championship gold medal, he would jump into the lake. Pierre Luders made him hold to that bet. Brittany Reinbolt with Jessica Davis of the USA. Third of our sleds in the second and deciding heat round three of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. The 34-year-old with a 26-year-old new brake woman this season, Jessica Davis from Los Angeles, California. 5.86 getaway, 5.84 in the first heat. Now, Brittany crashed in training. They were delighted that there were no such dramas in the first heat, but the second run should be quicker. Pulls it down in the middle of four, a little late on the exit, but gets it safely through five. That has taken a bit of speed out of the sled, though. Gaps up to 3,900s. Will it remain? Little tap out of nine, and she's got to get back onto the left as they get into the Chrysler, holding a nice steady run, looking for that red flag. That's where you see that. You start to work out you're off from the Chrysler. Big skid into 13, and that's going to take away a tenth. Was 4100s up? No, she's got good speed. 4200s up, accelerating away from Martina Fontenev. Now, she could move up the order, Brittany Reinbolt. That's a good drive, 59.04. Again, just about six tenths quicker than her first heat. And in fact, in the first heat, 59.04 would have left a one hundredth of a second off the lead. So a good second run. Look, big smile from Brittany Reinbold there. You can not doubt that at all. Shauna Roebuck in the back. Just a little rocky, getting on to four, big first pressure. You see her haul the sled down into the middle, and that allows for the second pressure then, just on the exit. She avoids the wall. This is where sleds crash when they ride too high up the wall there in the left-hander at 12. Got away with no dramas there, but a big skid down into 13. There is Brittany on the left, on the right-hand side, Jessica Davis, and they are the race leaders.
Three down, ten to go. And with the rain having stopped, there will be a two-minute pause now for commercial break, which we didn't have in the first heat. So while the networks leave us, uh, keen support there from lots of US waving uh, school kids, US flag waving school kids. Not sure whether they are from a, a local international school or up from Dresden. There's Brittany Reinbolt on the left, Jessica Davis on the right hand side. Jessica joining the squad this year. 100 and 200 meter sprinter. This is her third ever World Cup, uh, her third ever bobsled race, in fact. Two World Cups, one North America's Cup. Brittany is a flight instructor for light aircraft during the summer. Spent quite a lot of her summer flying around the, the States in light aircraft. Best ever World Cup result for Brittany Reinbolt, fourth place in Lake Placid back in 2016. And uh, after finishing in 11th place in the first heat, she could move up the order two or three spots. That's a great outfit. I bet that's pretty damp, though, after being out in the rain all morning. It's been raining pretty relentlessly since about 6 o'clock this morning. We talked in the first heat about the weather. Where we go next week in Koenigsee in Bavaria, and they had a metre and a half of snow overnight. There are some major storms sweeping through the uh, Alps this weekend. Down inside the Kreisel, plenty of entertainment for the fans. The Glühwein and the Bratwurst stands doing good business in this weather, I imagine. The VIP enclosures up on the top of the hill there. I'm sure there'll be a few more of those when we return next year for the World Championships. Flag of Saxony, the white and green down there on the right. And there are our race leaders. They're going to have to work on their leader box game. <laughs> there you go. Just in case they get caught by another two minute break in the future. You always got to have a little bit of a plan going on. Something to drag out. Race three of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. Our current race leaders, Brittany Reinbolt and Jessica Davis of the USA. Next up, my broadcast partner for this afternoon's two-man race and the four-man tomorrow. And Van Nuenhaus of Belgium has got to get down the track, though, first with Sarah Ertz behind her. In 10th place after the first heat, one-tenth away from Najesda Sergeva of Russia in ninth. Disappointed with a bit of a loose first heat. I think she did not respond as well as she'd hoped to the wet conditions in the first run. 6.03 the start. Well, Anne started her career briefly as a brake woman and then turned very quickly to driving. Good looking run so far, much neater and tidier than her first. This could see a decent improvement. Starting to get a little misty down the straight, not so much for the drivers, but the cameras on the long lenses aren't liking it, all the humidity in the air. Great exit there from the Chrysler. This is really good speed, 110.7, quicker than anybody so far. She's closing the gap on Brittany Reinbold. She's overhauled the American. She's going to at least hold a position late off 14. Safely through and across the line, 58.84. Tom Delahunty delighted with that, coaching the Belgian team and helping out with the Dutch as well. A bit of a low countries season going on. But happier with that run, I think, Anne van Nienhuis. We'll find out from her later on this afternoon when she's got out of her speed suit and into her commentary suit. We don't have commentary suits, just in case you wondered. A much nicer looking run. Got down the straights without clattering the walls. She had a skid here in the first heat, pretty much straight over the brow in the second. Here, though, the little late hookup on the exit of 15. Didn't do her too much damage. So Amman Yunhaus leads. Brittany Reinbolt second, Martina Fontenev third. Ninth after the first of our two heats. Adesta Sergeva of Russia with Yulia Bestemenik, her break woman. Majesta now 31 years old, silver medalist in Segulda, fifth in Winterberg. So she's got a good season going so far. She needs to push out something really special, though, to try and recover that kind of composure here. 582, a little slower than their first heat, 
That might be an indication that the deep grooves at the start are frosting up a little. You'll see the shine on the track becoming a matte surface. You can see that quite clearly now. It's really starting to get quite frosty. You've got to have the refrigeration on when the air temperature is this warm, but with all the humidity, like when you open the ice box in your refrigerator, it does frost up. You can see the runner marks quite clearly down the straight into the Chrysler. 107 for decent speed, but Anna Nienhaus had 111. Seger in trouble. He gets it safely through from 11 to 12. Three tenths up, but that could be down to two tenths by the next marker. Less than that. Has she got enough to hang on? 115, five kilometers an hour too slow. Will she be in front? By 1100, she is. So she actually found 100 of a second more than the Belgians on that run. And so she had a tenth, adds a hundredth. Some result, 11 hundreds in front. So again, finding six tenths of a second with the improved track conditions from the first heat. Not too many of the runs in the first heat were actually that bad looking. It's just that the ice was very slushy and there was little grip. And so the track was pretty slow. There's the little nudge that sends you into a big skid down the straight. And here, as you climb uphill, got to be straight. Try and avoid the wall if you can. It takes a little nudge. And late off 15, just a fraction. And that is the increased speed at the bottom of the track. Drivers are finding it hard to respond. First of all, German drivers in the field in eighth place, Stephanie Schneider. Now we are in eight sleds covered by a quarter of a second. Now, all of these drivers are looking for medals, not just because they're German, but because they are all so jam-packed together. Schneider crashed out here in last year's race, but she won in Winterberg just before Christmas. Can she make it a second victory? Anything now is possible. The Germans had their national championships here in Altenburg just after Winterberg before the Christmas break. So they have got very good recent experience of the ice. Three tenths up, but it's not about Sergeva. Ooh, a little nudge down the straight into the Kreisel, keeping it nice and level and diving from the exit straight. Oh, hits the wall on the exit. 12 safely through the key danger spot on the track. And then out of 14, straight over the brow in 15. 2600 up. She's not adding much to what she had in the first heat. And across the line she comes, 58.75. Okay, that's quicker than the Russians, but only by 800 of a second. Is that enough to put her in the medals? Right now she leads, but there are seven still to come. Stephanie Schneider, eighth in Segulda, first in Winterberg, a winner here with Kathleen Martini as her driver in 2013 in her career as a brake woman. And Stephanie Schneider with a decent looking run, pretty straight down most of the straights. Again, not too much to carp about there. And Kristen Stracker, break woman there on the left, offering her congratulations as well, the 25-year-old sprint star on the back handles. <laughs> Stephanie Schneider leads for Germany from Najesta Sergeva and Anne van Nuenhaus, seven to go. 2400s off the lead, Katrin Weil of Austria, and Katty, the 25-year-old who crashed in training, 14th here last year, seventh in the first heat, been yelled off the top by the coaches. Let's see what the Austrians can do. Jennifer Onasania behind her. Discovered a new sport during the summer. She's now playing American football. Scored a couple of touchdowns in her first ever game. Now a little behind at the start. 5.83 getaway compared to Schneider's 5.74. And she was only 200s in front of the German. Can she find that pace down the track? 1500s is the gap. If she's still losing time out of the Chrysler, it's a lost cause. But a good run down the straight here. Oh, no, no, big skid. Puts a high on the first pressure. Now she's got to fight the sled to get control for the exit. And flops late. And that, I'm afraid, is not what she needed. Rocky through 11 and 12.
12 gets away with it. Not as close to a crash as Benny Myers in training. On the wrong side, coming down over the brow as well, but gets safely out of 15. 3,700s back. She's going to drop behind Sergeva, the Russian, as well. And that's only the sixth fastest run. That really came unstitched in a hurry, I'm afraid, for Katy Bile. Well, she will finish no worse than 10th, and that's still an improvement on last year, but in case of what might have been with a little bit more experience from Katy. This is only her 16th World Cup start, and she'll be beating herself up about that and this little nudge and that tap. Now, that pushes her away and into a skid, and you can see how wide her eyes are looking at the Chrysler that's coming up. Surge is almost to the roof, has to fight it for the second pressure for control, and all of that is cutting ice. She doesn't have it back where she wants it on the exit, so she gets a big skid down into 12, 11 and 12, and nearly rolls off there. Top six, coming by 15 hundreds of a second. Christine De Brown, De Bruyne, depending on who you're talking to, with Christine Brunowski behind her. Let's see if these two can push themselves into the medals. Only 15 hundreds of a second cover the top six. She's clicking in the little carrying handle at the front. That'll have been the coach's job, Graham Richardson. Not sure if Graham was at front or Todd Hayes. So they dig deep and try and get a decent start. 5.79 in the first heat was the fifth fastest getaway. If they can match that, they'll need every 100. 5.78, that's good. Stephanie Schneider, the leader, was 400s quicker. So her first heat advantage of 1100s is down to 700s of a second over the German. Now she can hang on here, Christine De Bruyne. This will match her best ever World Cup result from Lake Placid at the beginning of last season. Top six. 1300s up. Good exit from Chudai onto the straight. Little wavy down to the Chrysler. Speed is good. 113.2. Two kilometers now quicker than Stephanie Schneider. Tiny nudge out of the Chrysler. She's on target. She's still quicker than anybody so far. She's opening the gap over Stephanie Schneider. This is to match her best ever World Cup result. Top six on the way for Christine De Bruyne of Canada. This is the way to start your World Cup season. Bang, 58-38, brushes away Stephanie Schneider, who won last time out in women's bobsleigh, also in Germany in Winterberg. So Christina Brand, her first World Cup of the season, and she's guaranteed at least a career equaling sixth position. Career best equaling sixth position. So Bouge behind her. The 26-year-old engineer from Calgary in her fifth World Cup start. Well, you see there, ever alert, the driver clicking the push bar back in, or not the push bar, the carrying handle at the front. Well, that was a good run. There's Christine. Hi. Married to Netherlands, Ivo de Bruyne, who we'll see in the men's race later. Four, well, five to go, tie for fourth place. Alana Myers-Taylor with her break woman, Lake Quaza. Alana, the world champion and Olympic medalist. Third place in Winterberg, disqualified from a top three run for a technicality with a sled in Sigulda. She's had a great start to the season, won here four years ago, silver medal here two years ago. Also took a bronze in 2008, driven by Shauna Roebuck when she was a brake woman coming up through the ranks. 5.70 is the fastest start so far, and she's 1,300s up still on De Bruyne. Well, she was 500s up from the first heat. The rest came from the better start. Decent exit down the straight, but the gap's down to 300s. 112.9 to 113.2 two kilometers now to Brown. She's not as fast. She's dropped behind the Canadian sled. Speed is better now, though, than anybody we've seen so far. So Alana Myers-Taylor down at the bottom of the track. If she's straight over the brow, and she is, she's got good speed. She's coming back. 400s is the advantage, or the disadvantage. She's going to be right to the 100 at the line. 800s back. So Alana Myers-Taylor will not win here today. Stephanie Schneider will not win here today. Christine De Brown, could it be you? 
second place, say the finger and thumb held out to Alana by Shana Roebuck. There's Shana at the back, her former driver. And Nick Taylor at the front. Didn't know Nick was here this weekend, haven't seen him yet. That is Mr. Myers Taylor. It's a good looking run, just a fraction rocky on the transitions there. So Team Alana, lots of support for her. Met her family in Pyeongchang, they were so thrilled to see her at the Olympics. Tied for fourth after the first heat, a tenth out of gold. Germany's Anna Kola with rookie break woman Leni Fiebig behind her. Leni joining the squad this year. 28 year old from Cologne, this is her fourth race ever. 25 year old Anna Kola with a little bit more experience as a driver. This is race number 11 for her, 582 start. Find 700s more than the first heat, and that might be the difference between win and lose. They were 100 up as they sat down, but they've dropped behind Christine Debrandt immediately. Out of Omega into five, and then through the labyrinth, all neat and tidy so far, but a huge gap opening up, and that's not going to help. A long skid down the straight, 32 hundreds back. She's going to plummet down the order. Well, she's got it together through the Chrysler. Safely through 11 and 12, down into 13. Only the third fastest run at the moment. 120.1 is the top speed. 122 for Christine de Brown. She can't catch her at the line. Christine de Brown stays in the leader's box. There's Rene Spies looking a little underwhelmed, I'm afraid. 58.61, a tenth slower than Alana Myers. Taylor's just come down. Anna Kohler throws her head in her hands and misses. Well, you can't have a perfect run every time. You just hope that one of those doesn't turn up in the race when it should have turned up in training. Nevertheless, Anna Kohler in third place. That might yet be a medal. Well, rocky exit there and a clatter on the wall, and that throws the sled into a long skid down to the cross. Look at her looking around the peak on the FES sled. There's Anna sending love back home. Sorry, she says to Leonie. Christine de Brown leads with three sleds to go here in Altenburg. Could we have a first time winner from Canada? We had a tie for the silver medal position after the first heat, 400s of gold. Mariama Yamanka, the Olympic champion, tied Canada's Alicia Rissling. So it's Yamanka and her break woman here, Annika Dracek, who go first. Mariama, fifth place in last year's race. She was the winner in Segulda, silver medal in Winterberg, the World Cup points leader, the Olympic champion, 5.68. That's another great start, fastest of the second heat so far. They were fastest in the first heat and got better speed than Alana, who currently lies second. 2100s up on Christine de Brown of Canada. With three sleds to go, de Brown might still take a medal. The track is getting frostier and duller looking, less and less refraction off it. And Yamanka clatters the wall onto the straight, down to 1100s from a quarter second up. Let's look at the speeds. On the exit, 112 kilometers an hour, faster than anybody, 1300s of a second. The gap is going to grow, should be a quarter of a second in front of the bottom. 2300s already, this is for a medal. She'll be in the medals, the question is now, what colour for the Olympic champion at the line? A 58.18, that's the fastest run of the weekend so far. And that might be enough to win it for Mariama Yamanka. Her great woman, Annie Dratzik, doesn't need to pull the anchors on until they get on to the level look. Well, there are a couple of errors in there, but Yamanka did what bobsled is supposed to do, let it fly. So the Olympic champion leads with two to go. It was always going to be a tight race. Mariama Yamanka, Christine de Brandt, and Alana Myers-Taylor, the top three, high in 12. Got away with it, but it was rocky. Well, you don't win by being conservative, and she was not being conservative. There's Mariama on the right, Annie Dracek. 
Dracek, what stats she's got. Her 18th World Cup start, she's only been off the podium three times in her career. Two to go. Lissia Rissling and World Cup rookie Bianca Riebe. Could Riebe be a medalist first time out? Answer is yes, she easily could. Let's see what they can find at the start. 5-9-0 in the first heat. Even a hundred might make the difference. Nice load from Riz. 5-91, okay, a fraction slower than their first start. 2300 in the hole to Mariam Yamanka. She's got the monstrous engine that's Annika Dracek on the back. Out of four, neatly into five. Whistling, letting the sled find its own height on the corners. A little flop in the middle of the labyrinth. Out of corner nine, Chudai. Oh, gets a tap and a huge skin and a double tap. And she's on the wrong side going into the Kreisel. And this is going to see her out of the medals, I'm afraid. Double tap as she comes down the straight into 11 and 12. And she's going to drop maybe half a dozen positions. The speed on the sled is good. Christine de Brown is going to be in the medals for the first time in her life. And Alicia Rissling is going to post only the eighth fastest position, ninth position, with a 59-54, a really disappointing run just when she didn't need it for Alicia Rissling. Tied for silver after the first heat. She currently lies in ninth with one to go. No, you don't want it that way, but you can only race your race, and it's how the mountain treats the others that decides where they finish. Well, she offers her commiserations to her teammate, but Christine de Brown is in the medals. Mariami Yamanka leads with one to go. There'll be another day for Alicia Rissling. But when you're 400s off the lead, the chance to win is always there. She tried to let the sled fly early on and just brought it down a fraction early, maybe from the Chrysler, got the double tap on the wall and then skidded down the bend away. Last sled on the ice, Misha McNeil and Montel Douglas. A big first run from them, put her into the lead. Let's see if they can complete the deal. She has never gone last in a World Cup race second heat. She has won three races already pre-season this year in North America. So she has got that winning feeling as they load. What is the start? Not sure that that's quite correct. It says a 6.28. It might be. We had a problem with the timing at the beginning of the first run. All right, let's see when we get to the first split clock. Where are we? 7,200 back. Only ninth fastest run from Misha McNeil. Can that be right? We're going to have to go with what we're seeing on the screen. It looks like a good run. Neat and tidy down into the Chrysal. Good line, well-measured performance from the British sled. Decent tension as well. Good run down the straight. 10 kilometers an hour. Couple of Ks off Mariama Yamanka. Yamanka is going to win this. Christine de Brown is going to be in second. Misha McNeil in trouble at the bottom of the track. Gathers it all together. She's gone from ninth to the start up to sixth position. And that's where she ends up. It is victory for Mariama Yamanka and Annika Dretzek. And in the end, sixth position for Misha McNeil. We might have to look at the start again. The start was given us 6.28, which is three tenths of a second slower than their first start. A quarter of a second slower than the 5.93 in the first heat. More than that, nearly three tenths. You will get there. So Misha McNeil drops out of the lead. Let's take a look again at the start. Well, not quite sure who decided that throwing a Glühwein cup into the track was a great idea. Looked like it was starting to snow as well. Saw something falling down. I thought it was snow. May well just have been blown in off the side. Now, in theory, the team and Lee Johnson could protest and argue that they need another go because that might have put them off. However, in the end, not sure they'll go any quicker at the start with a second push immediately. Mariama Yamanka and Annika Dracek then claim gold. Christine de Brown 
and her great woman, Kristen Punovsky, take the silver medal. And Alana Myers Taylor and Lake Quaza on the podium again in the bronze. It's a great drive from Mariami Yamanka, top draw performance from the Olympic champion. And she pulled herself up to win it from De Brown and Alana Myers Taylor. Anna Kola, Stephanie Schneider, fourth and fifth for Germany. Misha Manil slipping down to sixth position. Still one of the best World Cup results of her career. And Misha with three wins in the North America's Cup. I'm sure is looking forward to getting back to North America as we get into February and March. Well, 20th last year, Misha McNeil, sixth this year. For the moment, a disappointment, but undoubtedly a big improvement. Her trajectory is definitely going in the right direction. Well, with eight sleds covered by 2600s, there was always going to be fireworks in the second heat here, wasn't there? There were a couple of changes further down the order as well. And some solid performances. Anne van Yunhaus picked up a couple of spots to go from 10th to 8th. We'll hear her in a commentary booth later on as my broadcast partner. Looking forward to getting her thoughts on what the track was like, how it felt to the athletes compared to how it looked to us on the TV. As you can see, just a few spits and spots of rain in the air. And we still have the men's race to go this afternoon. First heat of the two-man competition will begin on air at 4.30 local. That's 15.30 Greenwich Mean Time. And the second heat, in case I get my timings wrong, will be at 1.800 local. That is 1.700 Greenwich Mean Time. You can still see, actually, quite clearly, water trickling down the track as it drips off the roof. But at least the umbrellas are down in the grandstands and everybody's put their rain ponchos away. Still pretty cool and damp, though, hovering just around the freezing point. I think it's going to be an icy night tonight. See the signs there for Bob Team Walter, Nico Walter, and, of course, Bob Team Friedrich, Francesco Friedrich, both locals here at Altenburg. Francesco from Pirna, which is about halfway to Dresden, and Nico from Freital, which is a suburb just to the south of Dresden. He now lives in Dresden itself. And the two of them very much homeboys here. And the crowd will be supporting them to the hilt as they have the German sleds. And in fact, Johannes Lochner as well, whose uncle Rudy, a world champion bobsledder, is here. Lochner reckon, uh, reckons this is his favorite track too. So we could have a big battle between the Germans. A rainy day in Altenburg, Germany, but Mariami Amanka with her second win of the season extends her points advantage over teammate Anna Kohler, who won last time out in Winterberg. Stephanie Schneider lies third in the standings, and with a top six finish here, Misha McNeil rockets up to 10th position in the World Cup rankings. McNeil led a very tight group after the first heat, but with eight sled covers by 2600s, you always had to look to at least one of the Germans to pull the fat out of the fire. And it was the Olympic champion, Mariami Yamanka with Annika Dracek. A huge start from the two of them and a great run from Yamanka to take the lead away from the British sled and put herself at the top of the pile for the second time. That's three straight podiums, gold, silver, gold this year for Yamanka. Lana Myers-Taylor in third, but in the black jackets, Christine Dupran and Kristen Budnowski. The silver medalists for the first time, Christine. Mariami Yamanka starting to get used to winning. Annie Dracic definitely is 18th World Cup start. That's her fifth win, her second with Yamanka. Two with Stephanie Schneider, one with Anja Schneider, Heinzer. She's got a world championship gold and silver with Schneider as well. So 18 races, and she continues her podium success. Annie Dracek still only off the podium three times in her entire pushing career. Well, that's the women's third race, race four of the season. It's in Koenigsee, Bavaria, a week from now. Join us then as we get to the oldest artificially iced track on the planet for the mid-season race. Until then, from me, Martin Haven, from Altenburg in Germany, from the women's bobsleigh, it's Auf Wiedersehen, and goodbye.
Ja. 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 Ja.